Hey guys, it's Steve from 99 Lives, and I'm doing another episode of my Nuzlocke Challenge. I didn't forget about it. I just have been slightly putting it off because I don't want my babies to die. Previously on my quest, I went to the Pokemon in Viridian City and spent a lot of money on Pokeballs. And then... I managed to get out of the Viridian Forest after wandering about. Then I managed to get out of the Viridian Forest after wandering about. And then I managed to arrive in Pewter City. And then we saved the game in the Pokemon Center. But yeah, I did some research. And Brock's Pokemon are level 12 and level 14. And only his, uh... His... What are we talking about? Only Brock's, uh, blah, 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 blah. What am I doing? I'm so distracted right now. I'm sorry. His, uh, Onyx is the only one that has Rock-type moves, which, unfortunately, are super effective against all my Pokemon except for Rattata. But 12 and 14 means I don't need to be doing that much more leveling, so this episode is going to be... Another power leveling episode, I apologize for that, but we just need to get everybody ship shape and ready to fight. And honestly, next episode I should be able to take out my first gym leader, which will be great. Look, I'm even going fast for you guys. I'm using the Speedy Gonzalez thing to do my power leveling. We want Ender to be leveled up quite a bit. My god, it makes the music really annoying though, but look at this go! Because. These things are weak enough that this is the method you can use. Fight Ember, fight Ember. I just really don't want to die. That's that's where I'm coming from here. Rock-type moves are super effective against Fire-type, Bug-type, I believe Ice-type, and... Did I say Flying? This flying is in there. And so, Rattata's the only one I have that doesn't fall into that category, and he's normal type, which rock types do normal damage to. We're also keeping in mind that he's got two or three trainers inside that I have to beat, who also have strong rock type Pokemon. So basically what I'm going to do after this is purchase a whole mess of, like, potions or full restores or whatever I can get my hands on this early in the game, I'm not sure. That's something I didn't look into. But I'm going to try to, um, make sure I'm stacked just to fight him because trainer battles are scary, especially when you have to give up your Pokemon <laughs> when you lose. Just a refresher of the Nuzlocke challenge to those of you who are new to it or who have forgotten since it's been so incredibly long. Ooh, Metal Claw? Wait a minute. A Steel Move. Oh, that's interesting. Is Steel super effective against Rock types? I don't know. That's weird. I'm excited. Anyway, I got distracted there. Boosh! Um, basically, the Nuzlocke challenge has three main components that I'm following. One, you have to nickname every Pokemon you catch to give your to get a stronger emotional attachment to it. Two, you must only catch the first Pokemon that you find in each area. Which is why I only have four right now and why I'm blasting through Pokemon that I don't currently own and just killing them. Because I'm only allowed one per area and I already got my one for this route. And three, when your Pokemon faints, you must release it into the wild immediately as if it died. So you no longer have that Pokemon. So it's very possible to just entirely lose this because... If you run out of Pokemon and you have to release your last one, the game's over. You're out of Pokemon. So you see my concerns in leveling up so I don't die against the first gym leader. Because if any of my Pokemon 
faint, I have to release them, and then I no longer have those Pokemon to play with. And it's a huge disadvantage. Because with all the routes and towns, it's... Look at the map real quick. It, it, it should have the areas. Use that. That's... Let's see. One... Two... Three... Four... Five... Six... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And this is all just assuming that you're able to catch Pokemon in towns. A lot of towns don't have grass, so you can't catch anything in them. Anyway, I'll have like a, a total of maybe 20 po Pokemon, and that's also remembering that you have to catch the first Pokemon you encounter. If that Pokemon faints, you just don't get a Pokemon for that area. So, it's really stressful, and I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. There we go. Ender is level 14, so let's get back to our Pokemon speedrun level up, and we're going to switch you here. I know you're a bug type. I should probably be leveling up Rattata, but we're leveling up everybody, so poison sting. You're also really close to Beedrill, which will be useful in the future, so might as well. Because we're also considering, because um, at the very least Geodude doesn't have any rock type moves, he has nothing super effective against us. He only has Tackle and Harden. Oh! I didn't realize how weak he was getting, it's a good thing I looked down. <laughs> Puppy cat still gets some experience, and let's go heal. Yeah, level 14 Onyx has Tackle, ba Bide, I think, um, Rock Tomb, and maybe Harden? Probably not. Come on. Oi! 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 Oh my god. Imagine if switching out your Pokemon could fail and that failed. Oh my god. Oh! Pokemon. Jesus. Ideally, I would like Ender to be over level 14 for this fight. Just for the sake of him not dying. Also, if you guys notice, my name isn't up in the corner. I can't... I'm using um, open broadcast software for normal Let's Plays. But for reasons beyond my understanding, I cannot properly get it to uh, pick up my emulator. So... I'm stuck using Fraps again, which makes gigantic file types. It's horrendous. But I'm stuck using that for Pokemon right now because I can't get the other one to work. Eh, puppy cat, let's switch you out for Gavin. Because Gavin's the only one who doesn't get affected, or super affected by stuff. Oh, and he is apparently way better at killing things than you are. Sorry, puppy cat, but you suck balls. Oh, let's keep up the scrapey train. I wish you could one-shot things like Ender does, though. Be better, Gavin. What happens after this? We go into the next route. Should I, uh... Actually, never mind, that wouldn't work. Because of the Nuzlocke challenge, I have to catch the first thing I run into Lavender Town. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask if you guys wanted me to uh, try the Mew glitch and skip the kid over here and see if I can uh, make Mew be my Lavender Town Pokemon. It's an emulator. I can theoretically try it as many times as I want, but uh, I feel like in the spirit of actually doing the Nuzlocke challenge properly, I probably shouldn't do that. 
It's probably my favorite glitch in the game, though. For you, those of you who don't know the Mew glitch that I'm talking about, um, there is a trainer outside of Peter City that you'll see probably next episode, if not next episode, because I'll probably do a little more training and then the gym leader than the following one. There is a, uh, a youngster who you can walk behind and avoid battling. If you do that, then later in Lavender Town, there is a gambler type trainer. And if you walk in front of them, pause the game before they try to battle you and choose to fly away, you can get on your Pokemon and fly away as he's walking towards you to initiate the battle, but you get away before he does, so it causes the game to go into battle mode, but you're not in a battle, you're walking around, and it won't let you pause the game or anything like that. But uh, then you go over, you fly to Pewter City, and you go to fight that youngster again. And he throws out a level 12 Slowpoke. And the way Pokemon are pulled into battle by the programming is through a hex code. And by fighting and killing that guy's Slowpoke, you change the hex code to be the hex code for Mew, who's programmed into the game, but who never shows up naturally. And then when you go to Lavender Town, the game says, Oh crap, I'm supposed to be in a battle. And it enters the battle, pulls the hex code for Mew, and then you fight a level 5 Mew. But now I'm also realizing that this is Pokemon Fire Red and not Pokemon Red. <laughs> and so that probably would not happen. But it's a nice thought anyway, and it's a cool little tidbit that gives me something to talk about while I accelerate my Pokemon fighting through the U7 emulator. Which, Gavin's almost level 10, which is pretty good. And then I guess I can, uh, what did I name my Pidgey? Terezi? I could probably get Terezi leveled up a bit more. Because she's going to come in handy later. I mean, the main goal, as I stated like a billion times, is to beat Brock, and then we'll see where that takes us. I'm just personally glad that I didn't get any doubles starting this game, because in the nature of the Nuzlocke, the first few routes, because all they have is Rattatas, Pidgeys, and, like, Caterpies and stuff, it's very easy to have a team of three Pidgeys in the Nuzlocke, because that's just what you ran into. Alright, so we're at the point where he's starting to one-shot things, that makes my life easier. I apologize again for kind of a boring episode with nothing but leveling up, but it's kind of part of the game. Honestly, I want to get Gavin to 14 if I can in this episode. At level 14, Rattata learns Hyper Fang, which is very helpful to me. I did a, a, a lot of research. I don't know that much about Pokemon, but I wanted to be prepared, so I looked up when people would learn moves to see if any of the moves they that they could learn would be helpful in a fight against Brock. And I learned that no, none of their moves would be helpful in a fight against Brock. Except the only one I didn't look up, because I assumed it would be all fire types, is Charmander, and apparently he learns Metal Claw. And like I said, I don't know offhand if that would be helpful, but I will be looking it up as soon as this recording's done. Alright, let's go heal. If so, then I have definitely found my trump card against him. Then we just have to worry about fighting the next gym, because I fight Misty and I chose a fire type, which is the worst one to choose for the first two gyms. So, probably gonna be using Gavin some more over there to hyperfang all those water Pokemon. But I'll look up the stats on her Pokemon too, and I'll see what's good against them, and who knows, maybe I'll run into like a grass type on the way there as my first Pokemon, and I'll have something to do to beat her. If you guys can hear in the background, my dog is barking. She loves being featured in my Let's Plays because she doesn't shut up. I need a hip of my drink. Okay. I am parched. And we're fighting, and we're fighting. 
What else can I talk about? Just 99 Live stuff? This kind of is my let's play for just talking about random things, since a lot of it is the leveling up business. Um, Garnet Adventure is new from between my last Pokemon Let's Play and this one. A text-based adventure. If if none of you have checked it out, I would suggest doing it. Basically, it, it has a bunch of uh, story set up text and then a poll underneath the text based on the parameters given. Like, the hero of the story will notice like a couple different paths and then the poll asks which path the hero should take and it's up to the people reading to vote to see what happens. It's very cool, but it's it's completely audience-driven. Like, it needs those votes to survive. So if you check it out and it ends up being something you like, it updates every Wednesday, and it's really cool. And I would really love your support on that. So that's one thing we have. You can access it on our website, www.x99lives.com, or you can access it through the Tumblr, which is Tumblr URL adventuregod.tumblr.com. What else? Jeremy started some new Let's Plays. He's still doing his Spelunky and his Binding of Isaac, but he's also doing Risk of Rain, which is a new game that's really cool and definitely up his alley, so that's cool. Um, I'm doing my Skullgirls Let's Plays, as, long, as well as um, these Pokemon ones. Additionally, I've been trying out various Flash games. We, uh, we posted our first episode of Head to Head, which is kind of a one-on-one -on -one versus challenge where we just find a game that could be fun playing against each other, various people in 99 lives, and we just compete. The first one was me against Mal, and we played Cat Lateral Damage, which is a game where you're just a cat and you knock stuff off the shelves. So that was really fun. If you want to check that out, it's uh, up on our YouTube channel. And yeah, that's some of the stuff we've been doing. We've we're working on the website, we're updating the YouTube channel, it's pretty cool. And that Pidgey is sand attacking me, and that's my least favorite thing about Pidgeys, is they make it impossible to hit. Come on, Gavin. You are like closing in on level 14 and that Hyper Fang. I don't even know what I'm going to do with myself after that. Probably up things a little bit more. Uh, the training for the gym battle might be split up between this episode and next, just because I don't want to bore you guys with like 30 minutes of power leveling here, but I do want to make sure I'm ready, and that may involve doing a little leveling up next time and then going to battle the gym leader. Because I don't want to die. I love my Pokemon. And I want them to stay with me for quite some time. I wonder what time... I didn't check when Rattata evolves into Raticate. It's probably a, a much later level, like high 20s. Because he only has one evolution. But who knows. Kakuna is almost at Beedrill. Um, Puppy Cat who, I don't know if I explained the pun that I was doing when I named him, but just because he turns into a bee, bee and puppy cat, that show on Cartoon Hangover, my friend showed it to me, and it was cute. I haven't kept up with it at all, but, you know, I liked it. Ooh, level 13 is Hyper Fang, apparently. We got a new move. Enjoy this. Oh my god. Yes. On the one hand, he has Hyper Fang, on the other, he's only level 13, and Brock has a level 14. But, let's evolve Puppy Cat. Stop, summary, switch. We'll evolve Puppy Cat and get Terezi up a little bit. And then I will call this one. And then next one, we'll just, we'll get, um, we'll get Gavin and Ender up to 14 or 16, or 15 or 16, and then I say we take on Brock after we buy some potions. That should be more than powerful enough for them to take him on. And then hopefully that will be that. 
and we'll move on to the next area. Oh, and then heal. And they said bug Pokemon are supposed to be helpful because they level up quickly and evolve quickly. This is not helpful at all. Oh, you know what? I forgot that Butterfree learns Confusion. I have no idea if Psychic is good against Rock. At the very least, it will be helpful just to have a Psychic type move on me. And then she... Or, actually, I don't even know what gender my Pokemon is. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, Butterfree learns all those other helpful moves like... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, that was scary. Um, Butterfree learns other useful moves like Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, um, Poison Powder. So, I might literally just make my Butterfree have all the powders plus Confusion. And just stick with that. Because that sounds like a plan to me. Oh, come on, puppy cat. Hopefully Trezzy levels up a little bit faster. Because I don't want to leave her in the dust, because flying types can be really good. Particularly against Bug. I don't even remember if she has Gust yet. I can hear my brother outside my door. He wants me to play a game of League with him when I'm done with this. So that's a thing that might happen. Definitely not gonna record it though, but I mean... Leave me some feedback. Ooh! Puppy Cat's evolving. But yeah, leave me some feedback. If you guys want to see Let's Plays or live streams of League of Legends, I mean, I play the game, I'm not too good at it, and I'm not that avid a player. I haven't played it since last semester, really. But, uh, if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments section. And Puppy Cat evolved into Beedrill! Yes! Fury Attack. Alright. Let's go here. Boop -ba doo And we will level up Terezi just a smidge. Switch you over here. And we will be looking ship shape and ready to fight. Haha, -ha, keen eye makes your sand attack useless, and your AI makes you use sand attack until my accuracy gets lower. A perfect crime. Oh no, this one isn't as foolish. Well, Trezzy's leveling up quite quickly, actually. I'm a fan of that. Oh! Balls. I thought you had keen eyes. Only Pidgeys. Nothing but Pidgeys. Thank you! Wow, this is a lot faster than I thought it would be. Why... Why is my Pidgey so much more saturated with experience than my other Pokemon? I mean, I won't complain, but that's, that's nice. Go! Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. What I haven't done, even though I had plenty of time to do it, and I probably should have, is I haven't looked at uh, Jeremy's rival challenge and where he has. Oh, yeah, Gust! But yeah, I don't know where he's at in it, but his episodes are slightly longer than mine, so I assume he's much farther ahead of me. I also have to double check if he's doing Nuzlocke rules along with it. For those of you don't, who don't know, and who haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. Because I named my rival Jeremy in this, my friend Jeremy, who also um, posts on the 99 Lives channel, has started a rival challenge where he's playing Fire Red with me, but he's only allowed to use the Pokemon that my rival will use. So the standard Pokemon that Gary gets, the... Uh, Pidgey, the Rattata, he chose Squirtle because I chose Charmander, so he's got my rival Pokemon. 
And yeah, he's only allowed to use those. He can't use any other Pokemon in his team. And, which also means, at the point in the plotline where, um, Gary would lose his Raticate, he has to get rid of his. So it's kind of awesome the way he's doing it. Alright, let's keep going. Keep this gravy train rolling. So we are almost ready to stop, and the next time, a few more level ups, and then we take on Rock. Like I said, the Nuzlocke's gonna be a lot of power leveling episodes, but it gives me a chance to sit down and talk with you guys. Update everybody on the happenings in my life and with 99 lives and all the stuff we're trying to do. And you get to grow the special attachment that I have with my own Pokemon. We get to love them together. We will cry together. We will succeed together. We will kill innocent little rats together. It'll be a great time. I'm gonna... This next level up will be the last one. We'll get Terezi to 12 and then we'll be done with this episode. So, I guess I'll start saying right now, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to 99 Lives and check out our website, as I mentioned previously, which is www.x99lives.com. We are constantly tweaking the website since we just made it. It's pretty new. And we're trying to outfit it with all the features that we need to make it functional. But it's got uh, Garnet Adventure up there, and it's got links to our various social media accounts. We've got a Facebook page, a Twitter page, a LinkedIn page, that's interesting, and a bunch of other things. So yeah, check out all that stuff, check out our other videos if you like what you see, check out the Rival Challenge, and I am going to save. Yes. Yes. Saving. Don't turn off the power. Do, 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 do. Alright. And that's it. I'm Steve from 99 Lives. That was a Nuzlocke. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.